Welcome. This video is designed to help you choose a graph to visualize data. We'll focus on some of the more common graph types listed on this slide. The bar chart, mosaic plot, histogram, density plot, box plot, scatter plot, and line graph. Our goal with this video is to help you conceptually choose from among these graphs. We will not go into the anatomy of each graph, but if you need a quick refresher, there are many existing resources online. One resource is the Data Visualization Catalog, whose URL appears on this slide. We will not go into details of how to construct these graphs, which depends on the software you're using. If you're curious, we used the software R and the package ggplot to create the graphs in these examples. Choosing a graph type can be boiled down to asking two questions about your data. How many variables do I have, one or two? And what types of variables are they? categorical or quantitative, also known as continuous or numeric. Now be careful, these questions might sound simple and trivial, but they can often be more subtle when your research question is not well stated or when you're not careful to think about your data structure. Here is an overview table of how to choose a graph type based on your answers to those two questions. If you have one variable, in which case you're interested in its distribution, and the variable is categorical, then you could use a bar chart to visualize the distribution. And if it's quantitative, then you could use a histogram, density plot, or box plot. If you have two variables, in which case you're interested in the relationship, and both are categorical, then you could use a segmented bar chart or mosaic plot. If one is quantitative and the other is categorical, then use side-by-side -side box plots. And if both are quantitative, then use a scatter plot. In the rest of this video, we'll see examples of each of these and also preview what you can do when you want to visualize more than two variables. For our examples, we'll use data from Gapminder, which you saw in the Disciplinary Context video with Hans Rosling. It contains data on various economic and social indicators from countries around the world and has some fascinating visualization tools ready for you to use. You can also download data, which we did. We'll focus on a sample of 137 countries, and we'll consider four variables for each country. Major religion, defined as the religion adhered by more than 50% of the country's population, excluding atheists and agnostics. The possible religions in this data set are Christianity, Eastern religions, and Islam. Number of cell phones owned per 100 people, so that values of 100 suggest, on average, each person in that country owns one cell phone. Economic status, either OECD, or developed, or G77, developing, and average life expectancy in years. Let's take a moment to think about the structure of our data. We're describing characteristics of countries in the world. So each row or observation in our data set is a country. And each column corresponds to one of the four variables of interest. Note that major religion and economic status are both categorical, whereas number of cell phones per 100 people and average life expectancy are both quantitative. We'll now see examples of choosing graphs for different questions about our data. Suppose we wanted to know the distribution of major religions across countries in the world. Here we have one variable and it's categorical, so we use a bar chart. From this bar chart, we see that Christianity is the most popular major religion in these 137 countries. In fact, it's the major religion in 88 countries, and Eastern religions is the least popular, being the major religion in only 11 countries. Now suppose we wish to know the distribution of number of cell phones per 100 people. Here we have one variable and it's quantitative, so we can use a histogram. The distribution of number of cell phones per 100 people looks fairly symmetric and is centered around 100. That is, in many countries, on average, most people own one cell phone. But there are a few countries where, on average, its people own more than one cell phone, and also a few countries where some of its people don't own a phone at all. Instead of a histogram, we could also use a density plot to visualize the distribution of number of cell phones per 100 people. This might be a new graph type for some of you, but essentially, as you can see, it's a smooth version of the histogram. Finally, there's a third graph type that we can use to visualize the distribution of a quantitative variable, a box plot. From this box plot, we see the median is at 100 cell phones per 100 people. This suggests that, in at least half of the countries, people on average own at least one cell phone. This slide just shows all three graph types for a single quantitative variable, the histogram, density plot, and box plot. All three are appropriate choices for showing the distribution of a quantitative variable. 
The histogram and density plot show the shape of the distribution very clearly, whereas the box plot helps us focus on the key features of the distribution. Earlier we explored the distribution of major religions across the world, but what if we wanted to look at this distribution by economic status, that is, how do G77 countries compare with OECD countries? Now we have two variables, major religion and economic status, and both are categorical, so we can use a segmented bar chart. We see Christianity is more popular in developed OECD countries than in developing G77 countries, whereas Islam is much more popular in the G77 developing countries than in the OECD developed countries. Eastern religions, shown in the green bar, are the least popular major religion in both groups of countries. Instead of a segmented bar chart, we could also use a mosaic plot. The widths of the bars are proportional to the size of that group. The G77 bar is wider than the OECD bar, meaning there are more G77 countries than OECD countries in this data set. Earlier, we explored the distribution of number of cell phones per 100 people. But what if, again, we wanted to explore this distribution by economic status? Again, how does the distribution compare between G77 and OECD countries? Now we still have two variables, but one is quantitative and the other is categorical, so we can use side-by-side -side box plots. One box plot of number of cell phones per 100 people for each group of countries. We see that there is much more variability in number of cell phones per 100 people in G77 countries than in OECD countries. In fact, there are some G77 countries with as few as 2.5 cell phones per 100 people and, perhaps surprisingly, some with as many as 204 cell phones per 100 people. Also, OECD countries tend to have more cell phones per 100 people than G77 countries. In addition to side-by-side -side box plots, we could also make two histograms, one for G77 countries and one for OECD countries. This works fine when you have two groups, as we see here. But what if we had four groups, or even ten groups? Then it becomes harder to show all of the histograms on the same plot and still be able to see each individual histogram. And further, comparison of multiple box plots is much easier than comparison of multiple histograms. So generally, side-by-side -side box plots are preferred for showing multiple distributions. What if we wanted to show how number of cell phones per 100 people and average life expectancy are related? Here we have two variables, and both are quantitative, so we can use a scatter plot. From this scatter plot of number of cell phones per 100 people versus average life expectancy, we see a generally positive linear relationship. That is, as the average life expectancy increases, so does the number of cell phones per 100 people. This is probably not too surprising. Just be careful not to conclude causation here. Finally, what if we wanted to see how average life expectancy changes over time in the United States? Here again we have two quantitative variables, but one represents time then we can use a line graph. This line graph shows life expectancy in the United States in each year from 1800 to 2015. We notice a period of constant life expectancy around 40 years in the early 1800s, followed by a steady increase in life expectancy starting around 1875, where life expectancy was 40 years, until now, where life expectancy is around 80 years. There are also two interesting dips in average life expectancy in the 1860s and the 1920s. This concludes our overview of choosing a graph type when you have one or two variables. Before we end the video, let's briefly explore some ways to visualize more than two variables. One simple way is through the use of color. So for example, we just explored the relationship between number of cell phones per 100 people and average life expectancy. But what if we wanted to look at this relationship for different regions in the world, a third variable? In our scatter plot before, each dot was black but we could introduce different colors for each of the different regions of the world, as this scatter plot shows. Or instead of different colors, we could use different plotting symbols or shapes for each region. Or there's even something called faceting, which basically makes a separate graph for each value of the third variable. In this case, we have six scatter plots for each of the six regions of the world. We see that sub-Saharan countries and some South Asian countries tend to have lower life expectancies and fewer cell phones per 100 people than other regions in the world. It might be interesting to add economic status to this graph. We'll let you think about how you might do this. This concludes our brief review of choosing a graph type. In summary, we covered some of the more common graphs you might encounter. The bar chart, mosaic plot, histogram, density plot, box plot, scatter plot,
and line graph. To choose from among these graphs, we ask two questions about our data. How many variables do I have? And what types of variables are they? We also previewed what you might do if you want to visualize more than two variables. With this basic toolkit, you can begin to visually explore your data and gain insights and possibly surprise findings. But this is only the tip of the iceberg for the world of data visualization. We encourage you to explore these topics on your own. The resources listed here are great places to become inspired.